Hey y'all, welcome back for day 23. Um, this is going to be the last episode of this RV renovation series. Um, the next video that's going to come out is going to be for staging and the final reveal. And I can't believe that this camper is done, honestly. It feels like this has been such a long time coming, but I am glad that it's gone to its new owner and they're very happy with it. So I've been meaning to do a video on how to make my window treatments for a long time and I just never have. So y'all are gonna learn how I make my custom window treatments. Um, first, I'm just starting out by cutting some OSB down. I think maybe this is a couple inches wide. You can really make it however thick you want it. Um, and this is going to be the main frame that's going to basically hold the window shade. I make one strip for each window, making sure that I have enough for all of them. Um, this one, I needed it to be longer than the scrap wood that I had, so that's why I'm cutting that one extra piece. I think there was maybe five windows in this camper. I can't really remember. So now that I have rough cut the width for that, um, I'm gonna go ahead and make the side pieces. So I make these perfectly square, that way I don't accidentally like switch up a longer side. Um, so whatever um, width you decide to make your window valences is going to be um, how big you're gonna wanna make these squares. So if it's three inches um, wide, then you're gonna make a three by three square, and you're just gonna make a bunch of those. Um, I usually make extras of these in case I mess up on something. I don't have to cut more. And if you notice, I'm using a little block right there, um, and that just keeps my table saw from kicking back at me, because I don't want it right up against my sled, that worm, not my sled, my, um, guide. Um, so after that, I am going to go ahead and um, cut the ends off of these. So if you see, this was my scrap piece of wood. Um, I'm going to cut these to size. And so what I did was I measured how um, big the window is and went a little extra because obviously I don't want the shade to go like right on um, the edge of the window. I want it to fully cover the window plus a little bit. Um, that way you can't like peek in on the sides or anything else like that. Um, so I usually just make them a little bit bigger. And I'm sorry the video is so dark. I was doing this after dark just because I was trying to get them glued down and put together. That way I could upholster them the next day. Um, I wanted them to be able to dry overnight so I didn't risk like damaging the glue or I don't know anything like that. Um, so as you see I'm putting the um, side pieces on and it's starting to take its shape. Um, that's just some wood glue and I use some nails to tack it in there um, and it holds pretty good. So just make sure that it's um, at 90 degrees and that OSB sits flat on top of the piece of wood. That way it's not like angled to one side or the other um, because it can look kind of funny if you don't get that, um, not perfectly square, but pretty close to square. So I got all those done and they dried overnight. So now I'm going to upholster each one. Um, this is um, the same material that I use to upholster the couch. Um, so this is just leftover that I have. Um, I'm also gonna use the same material that I use to upholster the couch. So everything is gonna look nice and um, unified and it's just gonna look really good together. So I'm starting out by just cutting a rough shape of the face. Um, you can do this without the foam on it, but I think it looks a lot better with the foam because sometimes the OSB can kind of poke through and it just removes a lot of the impurities. Um, so I have some of that same material that I kind of just rough cut and then I'm gonna set it on top. Um, just trim it a little bit because you don't really need a whole lot of excess. Um, and this is my upholstery stapler. I bought this at Harbor Freight. One of the best things that I ever bought. Highly suggest doing that. I think these staples are only like a quarter inch, um, but they're great for like upholstering small things like this. And then I'm pretty much just going to do the same thing over and over and over again until all of them are upholstered. Um, so same thing for the next one that I'm going to do. You put it down, you kind of rough cut um, the fabric for um, the front part right there to give it a little cushion. Um, and then rough cut the vinyl fabric that I have. Um, as you can see, I pull one side and then pull the other side tight. Um, cut off the excess on either side because you don't really need a whole lot of excess. Um, cut off the excess on the edges right there. And then I do um, go ahead and do the corners at this point and I'll get a close up of that in just a minute. Um, but I tuck the corners in kind of staple them towards the middle 
Um, and then after both sides are stapled in, I can start with the actual middle part. I don't pull that first side really tight, but I do pull the second side tight. Um, and that's pretty much it to that. So let's get to the corner part right here. It's kind of hard to explain, so just watch where my scissors are. I start on one side and then cut the excess, and then I make like a little tab right there in the middle, um, and I do that um, to both sides, so um, the top and the bottom. And um, I kind of cut it close to where, I don't know, the edges, the corner, but not too far in, because you don't want to cut too far. So um, I'm going to end up folding these little tabs up, and then folding the fabric over and around those little tabs. It just makes like a nice little connector, like a little, I don't know, pocket for them to go in without showing any of the white fabric underneath. Um, so that's just how I do it. I'm sure there's lots of other ways to do it. If you know a better way, then be my guest and do it that way. Okay, so next I'm gonna go ahead and install the brackets that hold the roller shade on. Um, and these are included with the roller shades that I buy. I buy roller shades at Home Depot. They are room darkening. Um, and I really like those because it helps um, in the summertime to keep the sun out, the heat out. And in the wintertime, it really keeps the heat in. Um, so I just really like them. You can use a lot of different things. I'm sure, you know, a lot of other types of shades will fit in this, um, in this valence or whatever you want to call it. But I just really like the roller shades. They're economical. They're not crazy expensive, but they do work really well. So I'm finally at the point to where I can go ahead and um, cut this roller shade. Obviously this is a custom window size, so I will need to cut this. Um, and I'm pretty much just measuring from bracket to bracket and estimating. Um, now you will need to include the um, width of the bracket that's going to go in the end. Um, and so both ends of the brackets make up about an inch. Um, so if you just measure your total um, width from bracket to bracket and maybe a little bit more um, and then subtract an inch. That's pretty much what your roller shade should be cut at. Um, but it also just depends on where you measure from. Um, so this is kind of an easy way to do it right there. Just put it up there and just guesstimate. If you need to cut more off, then cut more off. Um, if not, then that's perfect. Um, you can always resize these. Obviously, if you cut it too short, you can still fudge it a little if you move the, there's a little um, round piece that goes in the end of it. You can kind of move that in or out if you really need to, um, but I'd rather cut it too long than too short. And I do just cut it with my table saw, just like that, super easy. Also something to note, I do highly suggest getting the ones that are cardboard in the middle because I've gotten ones that are metal in the middle and trying to cut those on the table saw without it like slinging back at you is like nearly impossible and it's just frustrating and irritating. So if you have the option, buy the ones that are the cardboard in the middle and not the metal. Um, so after that, we can go ahead and kind of just test fit it right here is what I'm doing. I shoved the little thing in the end of the hole and it fit perfectly. So I'm just going to do the same thing five more times. Okay, let's talk about mounting. Um, so to mount these things, I use these L brackets. I use the bigger L brackets, the ones that have a space for two screws on each side. Just gives me a little more surface area to mount. Um, and where you mount these and how you mount these is going to depend on if you want them to mount flush to the wall, as I'll, you'll see once I start installing them, or if you want them to be installed like upwards towards a cabinet. Um, so this one is actually the one that goes over the TV. And since I can't really reach anywhere, um, it's going to be installed and mounted in the cabinet itself. So the screws are just going to go directly up into the cabinet. And I already know there's framing there because it is close to the wall. So I already know it's going to catch in some type of framing that's up there. So I'm not really worried about that falling off. Um, so I took the roller shade out. I am just installing the other two screws um, on each bracket. And then I can put the roller shade back in. Now it's gonna be the same for the one in the kitchen right here. I obviously don't wanna screw into the tile. Um, so this is going to be mounted on the cabinet upward. So I put the um, L bracket in the same position as I did the one on the couch. Um, and it's gonna be a little different with the other ones because they are mounted slightly different and in a different position. 
All right, so for this window, um, obviously we can't mount it the same way. And so the L brackets are on that little three by three square on each side instead of in the middle facing up. So these ones are actually facing um, the wall and they'll screw directly into the wall. And this is just me using a scrap piece of wood to make sure that it looks um, level and it's not like lopsided. And then I'm gonna get my screw and screw it in kind of at an angle like that. Um, and I'm sure there's other ways to mount them, but this is the best way that I found. Um, that way I can get four screws in their total and then stick the roller shade back in and voila, if you, little hint, if you pull it down and the shade is crooked, then you know that your valence is crooked and you can re-straighten it. And it's going to be the same installation um, for pretty much all of the other ones as well. Um, so I am moving on to this little piece. So this is the piece that makes sure that you don't hit your head um, on the wall when you're walking out of the camper door. Um, and I like to take this off and upholster it in the same material because it just makes it look really nice. Um, I didn't take the original fabric off this. There was a million staples. It didn't seem like it's worth it, but if that's something you want to do, then you can do it. Feel free. Be my guest. Um, but I pretty much just cut out the rough pattern and then you just make a lot of little slits because these are some pretty tight corners to staple. So just make as many slits as you can and just bring one little slit up at each time. Um, so if you just see, that's pretty much what I'm doing, working my way around. And then I do the little end pieces last and I kind of just fold them in and I don't know, it's like a little present that you wrap, you fold it in and then flip it up and then staple it in. And then I can trim off all the excess and get ready to mount it. So to mount it, I just use my 18 gauge nailer and just nail it in the wall. Um, if you set the pressure high enough to like 70 or 80 PSI, it will go through the fabric and not through the wood. So that's what we want. Um, you won't be able to see the holes um, unless you're like really trying to stare at it and look for something. All right, couple other small things. Um, these outdoor speakers were broken and terrible, so I'm gonna go ahead and replace those. Um, nothing crazy here. There's a plus and a minus side, so just put the same wire on the new speaker. Um, and I'm just kind of scraping off some of that old caulking right there, um, and I'll end up putting new caulking on it later. Um, these are, I think they're Jensen speakers maybe. I have them linked on my Amazon if you want to check them out. But they are um, outdoor speakers. They're waterproof so that they can get wet and it won't hurt them. Um, and I feel like this is just one of those things where it just, it's, I, I don't know. They're just, there's a lot of small things that I do to campers that maybe people don't notice or maybe just think it's always been like that. But there's so many little things like this that I do and I feel like it just makes the camper better as a whole because I've already replaced the inside speakers. Why not replace the outside too, right? And now at this point, it's actually moved um, because it's going home soon. So I've moved it to a different part of my yard. Um, I'm gonna clean the tires and um, my husband has already cleaned the outside of this trailer. Um, so that's why I haven't shown you that. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some air in these tires because they definitely need it. Um, this is actually the first renovation I have done that I have not replaced the tires. That's usually, um, a pretty standard thing for me to do. I haven't replaced the tires and I didn't grease the bearings. And that's because this was kind of a budget camper, if you will. Um, and I know the people there, I have, there's some of my friends that it's going to. And so I just told them, Hey, you're probably going to want to replace the tires down the road and, um, grease the bearings in it. And her husband's super handy. So I have no doubt that he's going to be able to do that. And now it is cleaning time. Um, so at this point I am just cleaning everything, literally everything. Um, something that people commonly overlook is the little channel that's inside the windows. Um, like bugs die and get in there and it's just the grossest thing ever. So I always vacuum out that little channel inside you see right there. Like it's just, it gets so gross. It's like one spot in a camper that never gets cleaned and it just has so much like dust and like dirt and dead things in it. So and then obviously got to clean out all of the drawers and all of the cabinets and pretty much every other place that could have accumulated dust over the last four or five months. 
And then once most of the dust is vacuumed up, I can go ahead with disinfecting wipes and just clean everything. Um, one part that I think I did forget to film was I put silicon on the counter between um, the tile and the actual countertop itself. It just gives it a nice like clean sleek look and so I did do that um and then obviously cleaning on the inside of the windows I'm not only going to clean the inside channel there and all around the window frame um, I'm going to clean the windows as well clean the stove I mean everything because I mean this stuff has been sitting in a shed for like four months so it's pretty gross if I'm gonna be honest with you and then I'm going to go ahead and clean this window as well, all these little tiny channels and whatnot. Um, and if you see that like part that sticks out um, on the couch right there, like the handle part where you like put your hands and pull it out. Um, I did end up painting that black in case you're curious because I've noticed that I forgot to film that. And <laughs> yeah, it just, I, I, it just, it's like an eyesore. Like I just keep staring at it. So I did end up painting that. Um, and there's my son. I don't know what he's doing, but he was making me laugh. I think he came in and was like, mom, this looks great in here. And it's always funny to hear my kids reactions when they come in and see things because they know how it started. And it's just so sweet. I'm also really excited with how this couch turned out. I feel like it just looks so good and you can't even tell that the fabric is not the same on the original couch as it is on the rest of it. Um, so just scooch that back in and it slides pretty good in and out. And I'm going to go ahead and clean the shower because I've been stepping in that pan and like moving around and my feet have got it really nasty. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that. Um, I think I even got some liquid nails on it, even though I specifically put a mat down to not get liquid nails on it. I don't really know how that happened, but it's me. So I'm not surprised. And then if you accidentally spill paint anywhere, these grime boss wipes actually work really good. Um, and... So I got a sponsorship with Grime Boss like right when my Instagram blew up. And so they gave me these for free and I was actually really surprised at how well they worked. So I have bought them ever since because they will literally get paint off of anything, um, even your hands. And there's like a little rough side and a smooth side. So if you need to like scrub it, I don't know, it just works really well. And I'm like, it's my pet peeve when I see campers and the windows are dirty because I just, I feel like that's such an easy thing to do is like clean the windows and nobody ever does it. Um, because nobody wants to walk in and see like nasty things. Um, anyway, I will see you guys back for staging and the final reveal. Have a great night.